Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with microwave potato chips. That's right, I'm gonna show you an amazing, no deep fry, no air fry, no oven method for making perfectly crispy potato chips in minutes. And not only is this method fast and easy, but this produced one of the best tasting potato chips I've ever had. I know it does sound too good to be true, but it is. Although there is one catch. You do have to have a couple very specific items to make this work. And to get started, let's see the first one, which is a sheet of parchment paper, which come like this or in a roll where you tear off as much as you want. And what we'll do to prep this is fold it in half and make a nice crease. And then we'll fold it in quarters and then eventually ace. And we'll basically make as many folds as we can, keeping a nice sharp point, just like we're making a paper airplane. And by the way, when was the last time you did that? And why has it been so long? But anyway, the reason we're doing this is because we want to cut a circle that will fit the plate we're going to use. And the easiest way to do that is to place the point of our parchment right in the middle of the plate. And then we'll cut it as close to the edge as we want it to go, which if I'm remembering grade school geometry is called the radius. And that's it. Once we unfold it, we should have the perfectly sized piece. And not only will this prevent the potatoes from maybe sticking to the plate, but for whatever reason, they just seem to crisp up better on the parchment. And then once that's cut, one extra thing I like to do would be to crunch this up into a ball and then flatten it back out, which makes it a lot more flexible and easier to work with, I think. So if you feel like doing that, go ahead. And if you don't, don't. And then once that's set, we can move on to the slicing of the potatoes, featuring the other thing you need to make this technique work. And that would be some kind of adjustable vegetable slicer, or as we call it in the business, a mandolin. And what we'll do is grab a well-washed but unpeeled russet potato and we'll start slicing. But since the first few slices are gonna to be too small to use, we're just gonna use these to dial in the size, which need to be thin, but not paper thin. All right, something about like this, but those were just a touch thick, so I adjusted that a little bit. And once we're happy with the width, we'll go ahead and slice those and put them in some cold water. And by the way, you're gonna to have to experiment with the perfect width for your potato chips, since that will affect the final texture and taste. All right, thinner chips are gonna have a different amount of crispiness, and they will also brown faster. But anyway, the point is you're gonna to have to do a little bit of experimenting to dial in whatever you think is the perfect size. And by the way, this is much easier to use if you're not holding it up in the air. And just let one end rest on the counter. And as I always tell you, make sure you use the guard, even though I don't, which is dumb. Which rhymes with losing part of your thumb. So please use the guard. And speaking of cutting yourself, if it was very sharp and you took your time, you could theoretically cut these with a knife although it's gonna be nearly impossible to get them this uniform, which is very key to this technique. And of course, as you know, I've been trying to get you to buy one of these mandolins for many years, since they really are incredibly useful. So maybe being able to make perfect potato chips will be the reason you finally get one. And then once those are sliced, we'll go ahead and swish those around in the water to wash off as much of the starch as we can, which is another key to a crispy chip. And once we do this first initial washing, I like to dump out the water and fill it with some clean water to make sure these are as starch free as possible. And if your water's not clear, keep rinsing. And then once we have those potatoes properly rinsed, we'll go ahead and dry them by placing those down on a nice clean kitchen towel. And keep in mind, we're only gonna be able to fit about nine or 10 on a plate at a time. So I generally dry only about 20 or so. And then as those are cooking, we can always dry some more. Which reminds me, once those are down on the towel, we're gonna to wanna to take another towel or some paper towels, and we wanna blot the tops to get these as dry as humanly possible. Or if you got connections, as dry as super humanly possible. And then once we've completed the rinsing and the drying, we'll go ahead and take some vegetable oil, and we will brush that generously over our parchment. And in case you're keeping score at home, I'm using canola, but pretty much anything you would fry in will work. And once that's been lubricated, we'll go ahead and place down our slices of potato, as close as we can without them overlapping, since they will definitely stick together. But these do shrink up as they cook, so it's okay if the edges touch a little bit. And then once we have those placed down, we'll brush a little bit of oil over each one, right, not a ton, but enough to coat. And that's it, we're ready to head to the microwave, where all the magic happens. And as we head over there, this would be a perfect time to tell you that all the times I'm about to give you are based on the power of my microwave, which I believe is 800 watts. So if you have a more or less powerful one, you will definitely have to adjust these times. But anyway, I'm gonna turn this on 
and set my time to three and a half minutes. And again, if you're using a super powerful microwave, you might want to set it for like a minute and a half. But anyway, once three and a half minutes is up, I'm going to go ahead and pull those out and flip them over. Which, because I'm an old chef with calloused fingers, I can just do it with my hands. But maybe you should use some tongs or a spatula. And then once you have those turned over, we're going to put them back in. And I'm going to set that for another couple minutes. And I'm going to very closely observe those cooking. All right, not just because that plate slowly spinning around is very hypnotic and therapeutic and relaxing, but I'm watching for them to start to brown in spots. And if I see that timer counting down and I don't see any brown spots, we'll go ahead and give it some more time and we'll keep doing that until they look and feel like they should look and feel, which is a combination of golden brown and dark brown in spots. And more importantly, they've stiffened up and they're not flexible and soft anymore. And for me, start to finish, this takes about seven or eight minutes. So it is a big advantage to be able to see through the door. But if you can't, just pop it open and take a look. And we're going to want to keep going until they look and feel like this. Or right, like I said, nicely browned in spots, as well as stiff and firm to the touch. But please note, these do not get fully crisp until they cool. So as soon as those come out, we'll transfer them onto a cold plate. And of course, we can start another batch. And besides that, while these cool, we can go ahead and season them up which I'm going to do simply with a nice sprinkling of salt. But of course, you can use whatever you want. I mean, you are after all the flaming lips of your microwave potato chips. And speaking of flaming lips, you can do a spicy version with cayenne or some curry spice chips or Cajun spice. But no matter what you flavor these with, once they fully cooled, besides being delicious, they should be extremely crispy and sound a little something like this. Yes, those really were as incredible as they sound. Oh, and if yours are not that crispy, you just need to cook them a little longer. But anyway, I cooked up a few more batches and then served those up with some sour cream and chives. And you know what? Let's just do a little more sound and then I'll stop. And as I enjoy what are basically the best chips you'll ever eat, let me summarize all the advantages. All right, first of all, when it comes to potato chips, I have absolutely no willpower. And if I buy a bag, I will eat a bag in about 10 to 12 minutes. So this is perfect when you just want to make a couple portions. Not to mention, potatoes are really cheap, and bags of really good potato chips are not. So you will definitely save some money this way. And I know they say time is money, but it's not. It's time. Which, by the way, we're not even sure is a thing. And then above and beyond all that, I believe these are definitely going to be less fat than a classic chip. So one could argue these are healthier. But for me, the best reason to do these, and really the only reason you need, is the taste of a freshly made potato chip is unlike anything out of a bag. Right? It really does taste fresher and more potatoey. Plus, for me, the texture is absolutely perfect. And I would describe it as exactly halfway between a classic kettle chip and a Pringle style chip. All right, for me, that is the sweet spot. And we're achieving that with a very simple, virtually no mess procedure. So I really do love everything about this method, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.